My name is Mike, and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series, we are building a Logisim simulation of an 8-bit CPU with the following design goals in mind. First, the CPU should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. Second, the CPU should be capable of complex operations. And third, the CPU should be easy to program. In the last video, we laid out the goals for this project and gave a brief introduction to Logisim and Boolean logic. This video will focus on how to build logic gates out of transistors so that we can build a physical version of our CPU once design work is completed. There are many different ways to construct logic gates with transistors. The type of circuits we will discuss in this video are called NMOS circuits. This stands for N-channel MOSFET, those being the type of transistor used to construct these gates. Conveniently, Logisim has a transistor component which behaves very similarly to a MOSFET for the purposes of constructing logic gates. If I open up Logisim, we can see that there is a menu called Wiring off to the left that has all kinds of useful components for us to use. Before we start playing with transistors though, let's drag a pole resistor onto our circuit. We'll set the pole direction of the resistor to 1 if it's not set to that already. If we then connect the other end of the resistor to a pin, we can see that the resistor pulls that pin high, giving it a value of 1. Next, let's put a ground component into our circuit just below the resistor. If we connect the other end of our resistor to ground, then we can see that our pin gets pulled low, setting its value to 0. The trick then is to be able to selectively connect our output to ground depending on if some condition is met. Enter the humble transistor. Let's add one to our circuit. We will set this transistor to be an n-type transistor and set its facing to north if it isn't set to that already. We can see that our transistor has three connection points. The first two, called the source and drain, are the path that we want to allow electricity to flow through. The third terminal, called the gate, will control whether electricity is allowed to flow through the source and drain terminals. If we place our transistor between our resistor and ground, then wire an input to the gate of the transistor, we can see that our output is only pulled low when we give a high input to our transistor. We have just made a NOT gate. We can add more transistors to our circuit in order to implement more complex logic functions. For example, if we replace our single transistor with two transistors in series, we get a NAND gate. If we instead place two transistors in parallel, we get a NOR gate. If we want AND and OR gates, we can simply make a NOT gate and wire the output of our NAND or NOR gate into its input. Exclusive OR gates are a bit more tricky, but we can build them using combinations of other gates by breaking the XOR function down into simpler functions. Let's think about the definition of the XOR function. We want the output to be 1 if only one but not both of the inputs are 1. In other words, the output is 1 if A or B is 1 and A and B are not both 1. So we can OR the inputs, NAND the inputs, and then take the outputs of both of those and put it into an AND gate. The result will be an XOR gate. We can translate this into transistors by starting with a NAND gate, then building an OR gate, then simply directly connecting the outputs of those two gates together. Then, whenever either gate outputs zero, it will pull the output of the other gate low as well. This trick avoids having to explicitly construct the final AND gate, allowing us to perform the same logic with fewer transistors. Now, just to show that this works in the real world and not just in the simulation, I'll show an example using real transistors on a breadboard. I'll be using some 2N7000 N-channel MOSFETs with a 1K ohm pull-up resistor. The value of this resistor is not terribly important for this simple example. Any moderately high value should work. The main trade-off here is that higher value resistors make our logic gates use less power, but they also make them operate more slowly. 
I'll go ahead and put two of our transistors in series, then connect one side to ground and the other side to positive voltage through the resistor. I'll then connect the output to an LED so we can see what the output is. The inputs will just connect directly to the power rails through some jumper wires. If the input is connected to the positive rail, it is a 1, and if it is connected to the negative rail, it is 0. If we play around with the inputs, we can see that this gate functions as a NAND gate. We can turn this NAND gate into an AND gate by adding another transistor and resistor to invert the output. Now, if I simply place our first two transistors in parallel instead, making sure not to connect the two gate terminals together so they can still function as separate outputs, we now have an OR gate. Now that you know how to build logic gates using NMOS circuits, you should have all the tools you need to build any digital logic circuit you want. This means that once we finish designing our CPU, we should be able to build a physical version of it, though that will definitely take a lot of time and patience. In the next video, we'll start building more complex logic simulations using more gates so we can build circuits that do more useful tasks. Until then, feel free to play around in Logisim or even pick up some transistors and see what you can create. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.